the Lord in prayer Because he has got the answers And he's always there He will stick the you through If it can do things Know that he promised that he'd be there Right to the end Yeah, not to temptation That's what we tried to do But Lord, you know we're human We can't make that my side, because your love and understand are the same all the time, everybody praise the Lord, everybody praise my father, yeah, everybody praise him, praise his holy name, he's so wonderful. Amen, amen. Good morning. Praise his holy name indeed. We good have morning. been waiting. Good morning, good morning. We have been waiting patiently. Sister Addison Clark, you have been waiting patiently. Sister Carol Bain, since yesterday around lunchtime, I happened to um what do I say? Come across the Friday morning point 14 online morning worship link. It was up on YouTube and I checked the chat and I saw Sister Carol Bain had good morning greetings. Oh, how we love this online worship. And no matter what the problem is, tech problem, whatever, our God is Mr. Fix It and he will fix it. He would not deprive us of our worship. So this morning we are on the last leg last leg of our weekly online morning worship. And we say, welcome to Thankful Friday. Welcome to the tech team. We thank God for the blessings of the week. He's leading, his protection, and his word of truth, which is being delivered to us with confidence, with simplicity, with clarity, and with authority. And for every person who is being blessed by joining us online to worship, especially this week, we give God thanks. And for the persons who make this worship possible, we say thank you on this thankful Friday. Thanks to for answered prayers and the opportunity to be prayed for. As the good old hymn says, now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, our Lord, our fortress, our rock and deliverer, we come to you this morning with thankful hearts, with grateful hearts. And this morning we say, Thank you, Lord, for all you do for us. Thank you for all you are to us. This morning, we place our worship into your hands. We place Brother Pastor Morris and Sister Morris into your hands, O oh God, as the instructors, O oh God. Grant, dear Lord, that we wouldn't accept the teachings as just as information, but do grant, dear Lord, that each of us will regard it as instruction, as words of wisdom, as encouragement, and may our hearts be strengthened as we continue on this journey for life. Bless us, and dear Lord, lead us in your righteous way, always. And as we go through this day, may we do so hand in hand with you so that we can be led all right. So thank you, thank you, thank you for the opportunity of worship again, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we are going to 
waste no time as we go into the ministry of music. Amen. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Very good, Brother Ryan. <laughs> we hope you are uh, too. I hope so too. <laughs> Um, I look a little short there. All right. <laughs> All right, that might be kind of odd. Add some, um, I know you hear me correct. Are you hearing me properly? Yes, we are. All right. I did some, I had some, um, some reconfiguration in my room here. Um, just for some guys to, to deal with something yesterday. And so I don't know, everything isn't as connected as it should be. But anyway. God is good. Yeah, yeah, we're sure about that. Uh, good morning to the world. Good to see you all. Happy Friday. It's such a pleasure to be here once more. I saw lots of activity online. Dion Sobers and Carol Bean, as you mentioned. Janice Subtle. All right. Carlene Lewis. The Canadian flag, the American flag, Gora Noel Fraser, Rose Page, Russell Hamilton, Yvette St. Saint- Louis, so good to see you all. And God be praised. Let's get into some music. It might have to be a cappella this morning, but that's all right. We just go and adjust my camera a little. One second. I just want to adjust that camera of mine there. All right. Very well. So I am back. This is just a little better. Good. And I got my got my music working. We're gonna do one song, one quick song. And it's simple chorus. Simple chorus. It goes somewhere this. Something when you give it away, you give it away, give it away. Love is something when you give it away, it comes right back to you. It's just like that miracle penny, you put it in your pocket and you don't have any. But if you share it all you give it away it comes right back to you peace is something when you give it away you give it away you give it away peace is something when you give it away it comes right back to you it's just like share it all you give it away it comes right back to you it's just like a miracle penny you put it in your pocket and you don't have any but if you share it all you give it away it comes right back it comes right back it comes right back This is the prince. Amen. 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 How appropriate. The central issue. Love or selfishness. Yeah. And we are happy for the ministry of Pastor Morris and the Sister Morris. And this morning, we 
conclude the topic, love or selfishness, we conclude it with a legacy of love, a legacy of love. So over to you, Pastor and Sister Morris. Blessings as you deliver God's word. Blessings. Good morning, good morning, good morning everyone. everyone. A bright morning today. Good morning. We have been having some bright days. I trust, but, <laughs> I trust that the Spirit of God will be also warming up our hearts day by day. Bringing away the joss of sin and selfishness from us. And fill us with love, the warm sunshine of love. Love is something when you give it away, it comes right back. It's right back. Indeed. So may God bless us this morning. As we go through, we come to the lesson. Very powerful lesson for this week. Very, very powerful lesson. Looking at God's dealings, looking at the great controversy and seeing how God is working with his people. And this adversary of ours that he's not giving up until the last day when this last message is and God's last people are seen. We know his doom is coming. So let's hold on. The battle is on. The great controversy is on. Victory is assured for those who stay with God. So we want to pray and then we want to get into the discussion of the lesson for today. So let us pray. Let's pray. Once again, Heavenly Father, we call upon your name. Thank you again so much for waking us up this morning and bringing us together on this platform where we can rejoice with each other in the study of your word. Let us feel and experience your Holy Spirit. And you today we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, the central issue, love or selfishness, is what we are going to get into this morning. And you know what, just some quick thoughts as I was going through it that came to me from the introduction. <clears throat> from the teacher's quarterly? Yes, from the teacher's quarterly. It says, as we have been studying this week, focusing on the great controversy, and we want to we see what an important part it is playing in our lives, even today. Because from some of the themes that we were highlighted this week, and as a result of the rejection of Christ, Judah, officially as a political entity, lost its favor status as God's special people, as and suffered the horrific experience of the destruction of Jerusalem. Now he has established his people, and we are the people, we are the remnant of Israel. And here we are. God has led this church in his mission, and he is calling people of all nations to receive the good news and to join other, with other people in helping them to find and to seek out the good news, to learn the legacy of love that we ought to be experiencing day by day as we help others to come to you. Yeah. Hmm? So we continue with the lesson today. So we, we have discovered it says, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking to devour. He's really out to devour. And we discover that because of that, and the re God's people rejecting God and the Messiah that was Christ as he came upon the scene, I think it says over a million Jews perished in yes. Jerusalem, and thousands, over hundred thousands of them were taken captive because they have changed leadership. The devil. They, have, they, 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 they were more, they give allegiance to the adversary and he acted the way he is. That's who he is. He's destructive. On the other hand, God's legacy is one of love and caring. He wants to save his people. He has done everything necessary to 
it helps us to understand and appreciate his love and to know that he don't want any of us to be lost. His desire is that nobody should be lost. And he has done everything necessary so that all men, everybody who want to be saved, can be saved. There is no situation in life that we can find ourselves in that if we cry it to God, that he will not deliver us from and prepare us to spend eternity with him. That's right. And what is important in the lesson that was brought out is the, we saw where the devil, part of the lesson, say his twofold strategy mm -hmm. to receive and destroy God's people. That is what it is. And the bottom line, that's it. When the evil one fails to accomplish through what he failed to accomplish through persecution, he hopes to achieve through compromise. So that is what something we have to be very, very much aware of. And we are reminded that God is never caught by surprise. And even the most challenging times we saw where he preserved his people. So we have the assurance if we be faithful that he is going to preserve us. I, I want to also put on the table that the devil is more successful in deception than in persecution. Mm -hmm. As the people of God who persecuted the church grew more rapidly. Because it purged out those who were half baked, who were not serious. And those who were committed and fully committed to God stayed and the church grew because the God was able to pour out his spirit and copious showers upon his people and the church multiplied. The devil, when he tried deception, that's what caused the people of God to fail miserably. And it is a very important lesson for us. Do not compromise the word of God. I don't want to, it is not a point, I want to overemphasize it. Do not compromise the word of God. God's word, God knows what he wants. He has established it clearly. And do not allow anyone to cause you to compromise the word of God. Take God's word as it is. Believe it as it is. Accept it for what it says and try as not let the Spirit of God give us the strength and the grace to live it as it is. So God is saying, <clears throat> we look at the legacy of love. It starts off by looking again at Acts chapter 2. The day of Pentecost was fully come. And there are some important points we need to draw from this. They were together in one place. I see fellowship. I see one mission, one purpose. They, they, they came through. We have looked at the lesson after the, 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 the early church, after the disruption, well, before the disruption of the Ruth, after Christ established the Christian church. They were persecuted, and as they were persecuted, the church grew. We saw that on Wednesday. They grew rapidly. And then God told them, listen, listen, there's a great work yet to be done. Tarry in Jerusalem until they be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they, they, they came together, they confessed their sins, they made things right. And, then, and there in the upper room together, fellowshipping together in one place. And as they made things right one with the other, the Spirit of God came upon them. As a rushing mighty wind, it filled the place where they, so they knew, they knew something special was happening. I wish there's a day coming when the church is going to experience something tremendous, something special will happen that everybody in the church will know. In that day, one man stood up and preached the gospel and 3,000 souls were converted in that one day. I want to repeat the thing that you and I cannot say, cannot convert people. All we are called to do is to proclaim this message under the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that does all the transforming. All the power of the Holy Spirit came upon the people and 3,000 souls were converted. Cooperation with God and loving the Spirit of God to take possession of us. And therefore, the world grew rapidly. That's a day coming yet. There's a day coming. Just the same thing will happen in the future. It's coming. It's coming. coming. It's coming. It's so coming. as we talk about the legacy of mm -hmm. love, what was the driving force of the early Christians? What was the driving force of the early Christians? 
As we were reading the text, it says, oh, as I just said, yeah, the fruit of the Spirit is love. The Spirit of God came upon them and there was a love thing, joy, peace, all of that. And it says, is John 13 to divide? By this shall all men know that we are his disciples. When they have love, one to another. have love, one to another. That is what others would see and admire because the world is a selfish place. Look at the murder race. Look at what is happening. Look at the child being head being beheaded and a little baby being beheaded. Look, look, look at the world. There's a cry full of people afraid to trust each other. Fear. When the church has demonstrated that love thing, the people are looking for a people that are different, transformed by the love of God and exhibited in the lives from day to day. When they see this love, they said, oh yes, these people are so different, totally different. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. He said, and this commandment have the first John, it says, and this commandment have we from him, that we that he who loved love God, God love his brother also. So that this love thing is not something that you and I could just naturally get up and do because it comes from God, the fruit of the Spirit. So that the closer we get to God, the more loving we will be. Selfishness is what disrupted the church. Selfishness is what creates conflict in the home, in the church, in the society. Human selfishness. When the Spirit of God takes over and creates that, give us great love, then things happen. There's not in the Tuesday, I think I want us to look at the list. Let's see what it says. Yes, it says, one of the greatest revelations of God's love was demonstrated when two devastating pandemics plagued nearly Christmas. The early centuries around AD 160 and AD 260. Mm -hmm. Christians stepped forward and ministered to the sick and dying. These plagues killed tens of thousands and left entire villages and towns with scarcely an inhabitant. Mm -hmm. The unselfish, sacrificial, caring, loving ministry of Christians made a huge impact on the population. Over time, thousands and eventually hundreds of thousands and then millions in the Roman Empire became believers in Jesus Amen. during these two epidemics. Uh -huh. Love, ongoing concern and organized selfless care, selfless care of the sick and dying created an admiration for these believers and the Christ they represented. What a thing. They ministered to people. They cared about human beings. They, they, their lives were spent in ministering. The church today needs to get back, but that cannot happen until the Spirit of God takes possession of all lives. They ministered. In crisis time, the only thing that would have stood up and stood out was the church, motivated by love and doing the will of God. Christian friends, the world is crying out for Christians. The world is crying out for Christians. Where are the Christians? What impact are we making? What difference are we making in the world, in our community, in the church? When people come to church, they must leave refreshed, feeling, look how these people, how we, I enjoy church today. Why, why do you enjoy? Oh, oh, I, look, I met Sister, Sister Joan. And I met Brother Brown, and, and you know, we, 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 we enjoy each other's company so much. We, we, we shared so much. We were able to talk about the goodness of God, and the church was so exciting. Not the pulpit. The pulpit has its work to do. But the fellowship, the beauty of Christ exhibited in the life, the joy of fellowship, how we care for each other. And then we remember the only way that we are praying for Sister Broom and Sister Broom was recovered and she come to give testimony. We were, you know, Sister Sister Asha was hungry and we, we you know, I visited Sister Asha and her family and you know that they they, they are okay. We, we, they had a lot of food, but they they good, they good, they good. The children wasn't going to school, but we we, we, we supplied them with the books and the, the shoe and they're good. You know, we on a church board. Mm. It's not a church board. It's members transformed by the grace of God ministering. By this shall all men know that we are disciples when we have love one towards the other. 
a loving church, a caring church, a fellowship in church, a joyful church, transformed by the grace of God. Let's go on. Let's in. Let me share a, a, a life. Lift him up. Let's read the statement it says. This one. All who are imbued with the Spirit yeah, will no. love as he loved. That, that, that's what I'm, I'm quoting from the, from the writings. The very principle that actuated Christ will actuate them in all their dealings one with the other. Transforming power of God. When men are bounded together, not by force or self-interest, but by love, they show the working of an influence that is above every human influence. Where the oneness exists, it is evident that the image of God is being restored in humanity, that a new principle of life has been implanted. It shows that there is a power in the divine nature to withstand the supernatural agencies of evil. And that the grace of God subdued the selfishness in, inherent yeah. in the natural heart. The grace of God as a way of subduing our selfishness and bring all that beautiful yeah. love of God that is will be exhibited. People will see it, people will feel it, people will experience it. It will be a different church, a different community, a different people. People just different. Their faces are glow when they meet others, when they're working for others. There are people that are happy. Joyful because the fruit of the spirit also produces joy. Mm -hmm. A loving heart, joyful heart, ministering to others. Oh, that we would experience that in a fullness, every member feeling the joy and the beauty of working together. There's another state. But it says the mysterious providence which permits the righteous to suffer persecution at the hand of the wicked has been a cause of great perplexity to many who are weak in the faith. Uh -huh. Some are even ready to cast away their confidence in God because he suffers the basis of men to prosper, mm -hmm. while the best and purest are afflicted and tormented by their cruel power. How, it is asked, can one who is just and merciful and who is also infinite in power tolerate such injustice and oppression? Mm -hmm. This is a question with which we have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. God has given us sufficient evidence Amen. of his love, Amen. and we are not to doubt his goodness, because we cannot understand the workings of his providence. We cannot fully understand the great controversy. How oh, this devil could be so devilish? You know, this guy... You, 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 don't, you, you really marvel at him. He wants to control, he wants to take over the rulership of the world. And then look, look, God has allowed him to, well, he's, he's having his way to, to some extent. And look at what he's creating in the, in, in the universe. Look, look, look at the nature, look at the, the, the nations at war, this devastation, all the things that are happening. And he wanted to rule the universe. Mm. And God is saying, oh my, oh my. He's waking up the consciousness of men and angels and the universe to what the true character of the devil is. Mm -hmm. So that when the final curtain is drawn, the whole universe will cry out, God, you are really a loving God. You are God of justice. You are God of love. The universe deserves to worship you. That's why we lay our crowns at his feet and sing his praises throughout eternity. What love demonstrated in the life of God. May God transform us. And make us as loving as He is, so that the world can see a difference. The world can experience the power of love. Love never fails, He says. God will not fail us. And the power of His character is not going to fail. I want to share with us this morning. I think that there is a last statement I want to share with us for us as we reflect upon the week. It says, Could, could you just read this last one for us? It says, it says the principle that is illustrated in the story of the Good Samaritan and made manifest in the life of Jesus. His character reveals the true signif significance of the law and shows what is meant by loving our neighbors ourselves. And when the children of God manifest mercy, kindness, and love toward all men, 
They also are witnessing to the character of the statutes of heaven. They are bearing testimony to the fact that the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. And whoever fails to manifest this love is breaking the law which he professes to revere. Mm. For the Spirit to be manifest toward our children, toward our brethren, declares what is our spirit toward our neighbor. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Then we are reminded in first John, we love, if we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. You know, the, the, the Christian world has again deception. They are attempting to throw away the, the, the law because what the, it says, what it is just the love. The law, the love has replaced the law. And then again, the deception of the devil. Love is defined by the law. If there is no law, then they can't be loved. They, 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 because we love mangoes, we love children, we love all kinds of things. But this divine love is defined. The God of love has defined and has made clear what and how this love is exhibited. And therefore it says, love to God. This is don't have other gods. Don't do these things. You know, that if you really love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, don't worship other idols. If you love me, you remember my Sabbath day to honor me. And if you have love one for the other, do not kill, do not steal, do not commit adultery, do not worship when you show demonstration of love to others. And this love exhibited a pure life, a holy life, a transformed life, filled with the Spirit of God, honoring God, living in obedience to God's requirements, is what the world is longing to see. May this week's lesson, understanding the destruction of Jerusalem and why it happened, understanding the early church and its powerful, you know, as powerfully exemplify the character of God and see the church grow from strength to strength, transformed by the Spirit of God, and helping us to build the character necessary, that which God can say, these are my children, these are my representatives, I'm so proud of them, I'm so pleased with them, as they go forth and transform the world and prepare the world for the second coming of Christ. And we have seen it, even yeah. in the subtopics that we have given. Okay. We notice when Sunday talk about a broken heart and Savior, mm -hmm. why was his heart broken? Mm -hmm. Are we today breaking up God's heart? Mm -hmm. Are we living to please God? Or are we every day breaking his heart? Monday told showed us how God providentially preserved his people. And here we are reminded that we need not fear. Because God said, He will be with us. With us, He will be with us. He will right, be yeah. with us. Yeah. Tuesday, we read, faithful amid persecution. Mm -hmm. So when troubles come, don't just sit down and pine and say, Why me, Lord? Why me? When persecution comes, we know that we need not fear. And in the persecution, God is still teaching us. God is teaching us, giving us a lesson. And Wednesday, we learned about caring for the community. How do we care for the community? By showing love one to the other. That's how we care. And these are some of the attributes, these are some of the characteristics that we brought out in our lessons today. So we have to continue to trust God for everything. And so may God bless us today as we conclude the lesson for this week. And I trust our hearts have all been blessed after studying this week's lesson. Over to you, Sister Grace. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Pastor. You and your very supportive wife. Okay, I have not an issue. I have a concern. I'm looking at the the the, the uh, main topic of the lesson, the central issue. Love or selfishness? Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing, I was thinking that, you know, that topic could be, could have, you know, some sort of corruption. 
love or selfishness? Uh -huh. I'm looking at love, okay? Mm -hmm. Love can be, well, and I, I have the question written, love on whose part? So that I'm thinking that um, it can be love for self, it can be love for God. Love, I have love, yes. But I love myself. I am showing love for praise. I'm showing love for commendation. Not, not, not genuinely. Okay, I want, I, I want to accomplish something. Okay, so that I want this post, I want this office. So I am supposed to do certain things in order to be qualified for the office. It could be, well, not just church, but it could be politically. Yeah, and I think that is expected politically in order for you to be accepted as a candidate. What have you done in the community? And if you did not get accepted, then you forget. You know, you stop doing the good, you stop showing the love. So love for self, love for God. And I'm looking at the word selfishness. And I'm asking myself, why is selfishness so bold? <laughs> In so bold yeah. print. Yeah. You know, I cannot help it, you know, as, <laughs> as a teacher of reading. And reading is my stronghold, my expertise, the teaching of reading. And we have something called critical reading, you know, so that... um. If we were doing a comprehension on that topic, the central issue, love or selfishness, one of the high ordered questions for the comprehension to me or I, I, I would give is um, give the topic of the story or of the account, the topic of the passage, another appropriate, you know, Give it another appropriate topic. Give the passage another appropriate topic. Yeah. So we dealt well. We dealt dealt well with the topic, Pastor and Sister Morris. But um, I'm just saying, I cannot help. Selfishness. Why is selfishness written in such bold print? And love is not as bold as selfishness. Okay, that's my thoughts. We have the open forum, so we have thoughts, um, comments, and questions. You know, you know. So, uh, yes, Pastor, I'm seeing two hands, yes. Yeah, as human beings, we are born selfish. Selfishness is who we are. And that's, it's, it's acceptable. That's who we are. And we pride ourselves in being selfish. I want to be the best that I can be, even if I've trampled on others to get it. And therefore, only the transforming grace of God can teach us how to love. We see life differently. We are willing to spend ourselves for the good of others. Willing to give ourselves and all that we are for others. And that can only happen by the grace of God. Only God can teach us how to love. We do not know how to love. And that's why it is important for us to be Christians. Christ-like. Let the Lord teach. Every day we should pray that prayer. Lord, teach us how to love. Let your spirit take charge of our lives. And love, if you discover love also, is very just. Look at God, the loving God, and what, what happened as he withdrew his protection. You don't want me? Okay, I, that, that, I, I respect your, your, your decision. But my, my withdrawing of my love for you is also causing you your destruction. So love is a deep principle that only God alone can impart. Yeah. And I'm also thinking about another um another suffix to the word self, which is selflessness. And I looked up to see if that is a word. Selflessness. So the opposite of selfishness is selflessness. All right. All right. So let's take Brother Hewitt and then Sister Hailey. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning brother. And good morning to all. Pastor Morris, 
a wonderful week. I've been thoroughly, thoroughly edified this week. Moving from persecution to the caring church to love. Thank you so much for the lessons you have taught us. Pastor Morris, I want to refer to love as as um sister, as the host was trying to explain love and selfishness, etc. I thank God for this passage of scripture that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And mm -hmm. if we were to read the whole chapter of chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, we will see that we could do things, we could say things without love. Mm -hmm. Without love. And, 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 and the Bible says that these things is vain. And then it goes on to, to teach us what love is, sacrificial love. Amen. Love is a sacrificial thing. All the time. And, and Pastor Morris, I'm saying that I want to put courtesy on the table this morning. The word courtesy. The word courtesy. In that the law of God is given to protect us. Not so much do this and don't do this, but it's a matter of protection. And I'm saying that courtesy is a law. The law of courtesy is to protect people, you know. Because I heard a pastor said, I said all that to say this. I I heard a pastor said that when the brethren love one another, a brother could come in your house and open your fridge and take the juice and sit down and drink without asking because um he is a family member and because he's a family member he have access to your house etc etc and he could come and take this and you shouldn't feel no how so and on reflection i said well i didn't tell him anything you know i had to digest what it is he said so I start to reflect on what it is he said. Is this really sacrificial love that a brother could come in your house and just take things and, and that is an expression of love? But let me tell you, the law of courtesy is to protect. <laughs> right? The law of courtesy is to protect because he could come in my house <laughs> and open my fridge, see something looking good to eat and drink, but it's not really for human consumption. All right. So courtesy is to protect the brother. So the law of courtesy is love. The law of courtesy is love, 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 love. I am protecting my brother. I am protecting my sister. Right? So just coming in my house, Taking up thing, doing thing, doing thing, and is an expression of family love and one family and and his love. I am putting on the table the law of courtesy is love. Amen. All right, Sister I, I Highland. Want, I want to say again, love is defined by God. And I, I hear you. I hear you. There's a principle. Love has is a principle position. It's something that God alone can teach us. So that God is not a lavash anyhow, anyhow. God. <laughs> God does things decently and decently and in order. Yes. Amen. That's, that's God. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Are you here? Good morning, Sister Highland. Yes. Am I being heard? Yes, yes Sister Highland. Yes, Make your point. Ask your questions. Well, I want to know if you're hearing me first. Yes, we are. Yes. Giving trouble. Oh. My point is, how did I come in this world? Did I order myself? Did I say I want to be born or who my parents should be? It is because of God's love. And he has given me choice. Mm -hmm. He made the angels and he gave them choice. And all was going well until somebody began to say, 
in their heart, you know, I could do that work better than the boss. Mm -hmm. If I do this, I would do that, I would do that, and I would do the other. And today we are in the position where we are. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is why we must not question God. Anytime we question God's word, we are deviating from the truth and sowing seeds in the heart of somebody that is weak. We have to be so careful what we say and how we say it. We must not look to be a top dog. Humble yourselves before God and he would exalt you in due time. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Asher Rampersad. Yes, good morning to the platform personnel and to all online. I am hearing about love and selfishness and Sister Kathleen talk about why selfishness is so bold. I believe maybe the author wanted us to see, you know, how grave selfishness is. All right. But my question this morning, well, comment and question, you know, there are many ways in which we can show love. There are some people who come to the church and a good hug and how you're doing and so on, will give them a good boost to go back home. That is all they need. They don't need our money. They don't need our property. They don't need our juice in the fridge, but I hear it. And all that. All they need, you know, affirmation. Some kind of affirmation. They just need a little word of encouragement. That is showing love. Some people, they may need something material. Right? As um, Pastor said, you might have to help them buy the children books or put some food on the table or some or something like that. But I, I, I want to go a little deeper into love in that we live as brethren and I usually like to let the rubber hit the road when, when we are doing these lessons and come down to the application aspect of it. And sometimes we as brethren in the church, we pretend or we show we say we, we love and we show love, but I do not think that sometimes what we show as love is really love. And what I'm talking about is exposing people's faults. I hear Sister Kathleen do something, and the first thing I want to do, I want to call the pastor or the elders or the church, go to the church board and expose something that Sister Kathleen did. And to me, I do not think that that is love. And that is demonstrating love towards the people. Because if a member of my family does something wrong, I would not go and spread it all over the place. I, it will be contained in my family. But if we say we belong to the family of God, we must treat the family of God like how we treat our families and do the right thing as the Bible, as Jesus would have outlined, do the right thing in dealing with somebody who had made a mistake or who have erred. And that is a demonstration of love, all right? So that sometimes we say we have love, but our demonstration of love is completely opposite to what we say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. could, I, could I also put the other side up to that? You know that we can also be, we, so we see a brother or a sister living lives contrary to that which God requires. And because we do not want to get involved, we allow them to continue without dealing with it, without talking to it, without helping them out of it. Do you know that we don't love them? It's the same demonstration. We, know, we are not to throw them under the bus. But that's what we are here to do, to help them to become. Yes. You want mm -hmm. people to be saved. And you, you, you don't leave people in their sins. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we wait until church board to start to talk about what they, Have you ministered to them? Have you helped them? Exactly. Have you prayed with them? Have you been encouraging them to, to get out of that lifestyle or whatever they are doing that is contrary to their salvation? 
so that the church, a loving church, will be caring about people unto their salvation. Sometimes it's hurtful to tell them, but you've got to tell them because you love them enough and you don't want them to end up in hell. Amen. And so it is important as a church we understand the love of God and what is required. The Bible has all the answers there. They have all the guidance how to deal with these issues. Let's just follow it and God's name to be glorified. Brother, Amen. Um, Amen. Pastor, before Brother Fitz comes on, I think I would like to say too that um, protection is an aspect of love. Protection oh, yeah. is an aspect of love. So well, we no, protect. God then, if God is going to expose everything. Protect and shield. Yes. Mm -hmm. If God should embarrass us, showing us all, you know, we be embarrassed mm -hmm. to look at ourselves. If God should show us all the things that we ourselves do. So God is a loving, caring God. He wants us to know, look now, you could get out of that. You don't have to stay there. I'm here for you. No, no, people ain't know it. So don't you look. Let's, let's, do, let's deal it right. Let's get it right. So God helps us in our weakness to build and to strengthen so we can be better citizens. Yep, that's that's right. all. And we're dealing with a situation and we deal with it <clears throat> with decency and order. Everything yes, must be done decently and in order. Brother Fitz? Yes, good morning, good morning. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes people have to do so much to show love, whereas some people, love is almost automatic. Mm -hmm. You know? So that when they do something, is a big, is a big, um, how should I put it? Selfishness. <laughs> yeah, well, 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 they have to let everybody know what they do and sure. all this sure. kind of thing. You sure. know, sure. Whereas, whereas you always do, but you don't have to broadcast what you do. You know, I I always find sometimes um, people do that too much. And you always wonder if, you, if you're not doing anything at all, because what you would do <clears throat> um, in your closet, let me say so. You know, it's not something that everybody have to know and, and you showing up yourself as if, you know, you're so good. But love and what we do, what people do is automatic. It becomes just a part of your normal living. You know, but some people have to always make a big, a big parade about they did this, they did that, or what they do and what they do. I find I find sometimes that is a little excessive, mm -hmm. you know, so that people probably look at you and believe you don't do anything because you're not saying that you do, you know. But in normal Christian living, that becomes involuntary or reflex. And and not only that too, if you allow yourself to be exploited by people. You can't afford to let yourself be exploited by, by people. People sometimes people only come to you or to the church all the time and you just have to keep giving, giving, as they say, you had to teach them to fish as well. You know, because sometimes it's difficult to, to look after some of their needs. Sometimes they are they are excessive, you know, and they need to be shown how they must love others too, not love for them alone. Mm -hmm. They're selfish. They want yeah. this, they want that. Every month they want something. And they wouldn't look to do anything for themselves. They say, teach them to fish. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, but what is said is also true. And I'm saying we are basically human beings, we are. But there is also the other part of it where sometimes your testimony helps to inspire others. So there is that testimony of the goodness of God, which you, you, you help to magnify. They overcome them by their word of their testimony. So God is saying that our testimony about the goodness of God is also a part of helping others to know how loving and caring God is. There can be also where we have gone to the one to show ourselves better than others, which is again the selfishness. So that as I, Brother Hewitt mentioned, First Corinthians 13, we can do a lot of things, good things, but God says, that's not love. That's not love. So that let the Lord transforming grace be with love can only be with love that is transformed by the grace of God. Only God can teach us what true love is. The more Christ-like we become, the more loving we will become. And it's not the love that the world can 
to look and say, you know, it is one that God's name is glorified in everything we do. So this is the journey of the Christian. Let God be the transforming agent in our life. And it is going to be natural. The love flows naturally because it is the Spirit of God working in us and is reflected in all things we do from day to day. Yep. Pastor Morris, question. Based on um, Brother Fitz's comments, should the testimony, who should the testimony come from? The individual who has given or the receiver? Both. Both. The, the, I'm the talking about done. public public testimony. Yes, it's both. It could be from both, depending on what it is. Uh, you know that some the spirit of God moved upon some things. You know that again, as I said, First Corinthians 13 tells us that people can also do the same thing for different reasons, different motivations. So that we have to be careful that we balance the two. It's only the spirit of God can do that. You see, it's the Spirit of God alone to do that. And this thing is a spirit thing. It's not a human thing. And even if I am condemned for my testimony, but I know that it was motivated by love, I, I'm not going to take offense. Okay, that's okay. That's your opinion. That's your views. But I know that the Spirit of God has moved me to the sufficiency to do what I have done. And therefore, your glory is to God. Once it is, you are doing it for the glory of God. God is the one that is under true, and that's what you are concerned about. We also have to help people not to become too selfish, because selfishness is, is so close to light and darkness. The human heart is naturally selfish, and only the transforming grace of God can make us into what we're supposed to be. Allow the Spirit of God to do its work in our lives, and the church will be a church flourishing with love. The church of God is going to be beautified with love. People, when they come to the church, they'll feel the power of love in the church and they will long to come back. They always want to come back. These people are so different. They're so kind. They're so loving. They're so caring. They're so welcoming. People that love the Lord. Yeah. Um, Sister Prince. Sister yes. Prince. Mm -hmm. I am saying that the church is a reporting church. This church is a reporting church. The church is set up in such a way that when the disciples came together, they talk about the things that they have done amongst the Gentiles to encourage them to accept Jesus Christ. So therefore, the church is a reporting church, and there is nothing um, wrong and in reporting what it is you have done. There is nothing wrong in reporting what it is you have done providing your motive, your purpose, the intent, Amen. and your hands are clean. Mm -hmm. So long as your hands are clean, the purpose, motive, and intent is sanctified. Amen. And, and um, it is to encourage yeah. others to, to encourage others in the ministry and to equip the saints and to unite the body in faith and to help one another grow, right. then, yes. and only then, you are on the correct path. Yeah. This, this is what I will say about that. Okay, yes. I but think that is what I happened in the, share... early, in the early church. In the early church, um, as recorded in Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, people sold possessions and gave to the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And probably an Ananias and, Sapphira, and Sapphira Heard people reporting, heard the reports of others. So they wanted to be recognized. <laughs> mm -hmm. But as you said, mm -hmm. that M word, that M word is very important. Motive. Motive, motive. motive for giving. A brother sold a cow and he gave the proceeds to the church. And he told me, I heard, that, I heard it personally from his lips, but he's dead now. And he said that when they announced it in the church, they made um, reference of it in the church. He said he felt so good. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sister yeah, Asha. What it is I was saying, Sister Prince, before, yes. before you came in, I want to share an experience of sitting at a table for lunch, right? Um, because the church is going house to house, they're eating, they're breaking, they're eating and drinking. The fellowship in. I'm saying also that sitting at a table once, twice, three times, four times, 
And if you sit at the table and they pray and they talk about Jesus, but the conversation ends up, all the time it ends up with um, critical comments about the leadership and this, etc., mm -hmm. and this, that, that, that. Mm -hmm. I stop going to that table. Mm -hmm. I refuse to go to that table yes. because the table is to praise God, is to fellowship, is to talk about the goodness of God. But so long as it is ending up criticizing this one, pulling down that one, this one, I suggest that people stop that kind of eating and fellowship. Correct what, is right. And what do you think? Amen. Be God, please, you dare to show them the, their errors. Okay. Sister Asha, you, your hand was up a little while now. Yes. Um, I just want to I want to concur with Brother Hewitt also, you know, um about speaking um at the table when you sit down, you you invite people home for lunch. And you know what is bad about it? The children are there. Yes, mm -hmm. the children are there, and I keep mm -hmm. telling brethren all the time. Sometimes I will be talking to an adult parent, and a child or a grandchild come. I, 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 I send them away. I say, look, look, look. Your sister is in the yard there. Go and see what she's doing. You know, because you could be talking something innocently, and you don't know what these children, what their perceptions are, what you know, what what they take up from what you are saying, right? But that is in connection with brother Hewitt. Once I was um, the first elder of the church and the pastor came to me and he said, Sister Asha, somebody say you're not spiritual. I say, well, I, 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 do, I, I can't understand how somebody could say that. I mean, people see me in church, I'm in good and regular standing, etc., etc. I don't know how people know my heart and what's going on in my home. So I said, well, what do you mean by that? What do, what, as a leader, I was the first elder of the church. And, and that's a bad image to have, that you're not spiritual. And then the pastor told me, I said, well, what do I do? Um, you know, what, what do you suggest that I do to um, improve my spirituality? What, what was the concern of the person? You know what the pastor told me? You must talk about what you do. So that people will know that you are spiritual. I had a big problem with that. I had a big problem. So I had to go in church you now and say, I, I, I prayed at this time and how much times a day and how much spiritual prophecy books I read and how much reading I do and how much ministry I do and how much I give and, and all that for the brethren to see that you are spiritual. And I have a big problem with that. I have a problem. I mean, there are times in testimonies you will talk about um, so, some experience, you know, you met somebody and you were able to minister to them in a particular way. Right, you may give them money, whatsoever it is, and you thank God for the opportunity to do that. And and I used to always pray every day, God help me to be a blessing to somebody, right? But to come to show people you are spiritual by saying, Well, I pray three times a day, and when I drive in, I pray in, and I listen to this kind of music, and I read 10 spiritual prophecy books for the week, and all these things. I had a big problem with That's that. Still that still spiritual. There is a text in um, the what they, they demanded because the person who said that used to do that. Okay. Well, my Christian friends. Yeah, there's a text in Proverbs which says, I think it's Proverbs 7 something. Um, Let another man praise thee and not thine own lips. Amen. Yeah. Well, my, my yes, Christian brother, Pastor Morris, I, let's have your closing, please. My Christian brethren. Our walk with God, God dictates our life. And there are voices that are voices to be ignored. And the voices that God will send, voices that God, you don't know the difference between that which and that which is not, when God is leading your life. There is always the offensive devil who wants to do things and will tell you things and will send people the devil is always in church. Every congregation he appears. Even among the 12 disciples, he was there. Influencing one to disrupt the program of God. And therefore, we must have an air single to the glory of God. 
to listen to the voice of God. And even when people put you down, you will never go down because the Spirit of God is saying that voice is not of you. Amen. Christian life is guided and empowered by the Spirit of God. Let us have an ear to hear and to follow the voice of God. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yeah, Amen. Proverbs, Amen. Proverbs 27, 2. Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, a stranger and not thine own lips. Amen. Amen. All right, so um, from this lesson, we gather that we must demonstrate love and um, it's significant that the last that the lesson ended on the, with the subtopic, a legacy of love. And we saw about what happened during um, pandemics in the early centuries, how the church made a huge impact on the population because of the demonstration of love. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are going to pray at this time. And Sister Claire Aguilera will do our intercessory prayer. So let's position ourselves. Good morning, Sister Prince, and thank you. Are you hearing me, Sister Prince? Yes, good morning, Sister no, Claire. Okay, and um, good morning to everyone. Morning, and Sister Claire, I have just a message for you. Um, we we announced this, we're going to pray as well for the family of the Thomas family in Tobago. As um, Pastor Reynolds Thomas from Tobago Conference, uh, he died, he passed away last, last evening. So we, we also share in condolences to his wife and children, Johan and Star, but remember them in prayer. All right? That's the Thomas okay. family in Tobago. Okay. All right, back to you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come into your presence this morning, thanking you for guiding and protecting us during the night and for enlightening our hearts and minds with your word through your servant, Pastor and Sister Morris. Lord, we thank you for blessing them to bless us. And we have indeed received your special blessing. Oh Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to direct their lives continually and their family as well. We ask for special blessings upon Sister Prince as she has led out and as she continues to lead out in your program. Continue to direct Brother Ryan and his team as they work arduously to allow so many of us to view and participate in this online service. So guide each of us as we receive and accept your message from time to time, allowing us to make decisions to serve you and be saved in your kingdom. We, we pray in a special way, Lord, for emotional, financial, and spiritual blessing for all of us. We present all those who may not be well this morning. We pray for those on the hospital beds that you will guide the hands of the doctors and nurses who care for them. I thank you, Lord, for helping my husband, Clarence, for feeling so much better. And thank you, Lord, for the prayers of your sins. Thank you for your healing balm for Sister Glenis, McDowell, and Sister Elvira Lewis. And Lord, as we come before you once again, we want to ask you to take into your possession, dear Lord, the Thomas family, for they have experienced a loss. And dear God, we ask that you will heal their heart and comfort them in a special way today and always. Please, Lord, 
allow your Holy Spirit to overtake us so we can make a difference in the world around us. Help us to share your love with others because our only hope in this life and for eternal life is you, Lord. Help us to receive your grace, your love and kindness so we can live a life pleasing to you and always put you first. For where our treasure is, there our hearts will be. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to be committed to you and your word. Help us to be your true disciples and to invest our time, our energy, and yearnings in your Holy Spirit and make the best decisions at all times for you. Give us the faith in you that develops our spiritual discernment that our decision always comes. Every conversation, every place we go, each person we meet, Lord, and choose to have a relationship with, help us to be intentional about guarding our faith in you and to live for you. So Lord, when you come in the clouds of glory, may every one of us have a part with you in your kingdom is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Praise be to God. Praise be to God. So let me at this time thank all those who contributed to this week's online worship morning, online morning worship. Thank you, Sister Claire, for that prayer. Also, thank Sister Glennis and Brother Ifield for interceding on Monday and on Wednesday. Thank you, Brother Ryan, you and your team, Pastor and Sister Morris. How oh, can I say thanks to you? How oh, can we say thanks to you? You have edified us. You have exhorted us. And we trust that we all will demonstrate that love which you have encouraged us to so that the church can be rightly represented. The church can be a spring of love, a fountain of love to our community. And thank you for all of you who took part in the Open Forum Sabbath School Lesson Discussion and for all those who joined on YouTube and on Zoom this week. Blessings, blessings, and favor be upon you. So, Brother Ryan, you're going to do the remaining aspect of our worship this morning, including the closing prayer or parting words. Thank you. All right. No problem at all. Again, good morning, everyone, and thank you all for sharing. I I just want to um <laughs> yes, I just I just responded to those on YouTube. Yes, you recognize um worship um we recognize YouTube comments. All right, Roy Siran, we rec recognize um, YouTube comments as well. All right, uh, let's get into the let's get into this uh, this celebration. We, today is the twelfth. We go back to the eleventh. Yesterday we had Dion Green celebrating his birthday yesterday, and I go back all the way to the ninth just to recognize. Um, Ronald Rennie, who celebrated his birthday uh, on the 9th of April. Uh, we had Deanne Green yesterday, and Abigail Harriet as well, celebrating their birthdays yesterday. Over the weekend, um, tomorrow, oh yeah, as over the weekend, uh, we have Carol and Larry celebrating their, Carolyn and Larry celebrating their anniversary. We have Nicholas Mohan, Sister Vera Bob Edwards, Kelis Rennie, we have AJ Roberts, we have Revlon Fraser, uh, Jean Marie Hines on Sunday, Allison Dick, Shanice Hines, Adel Book, Janelle Huggins, all celebrating their birthdays over the weekend. And today, 
We have Raymond Edwards. We have Janelle St. John. We have Carol Vose Me celebrating their birthdays today. Did I miss anyone? Did I miss anyone? Just checking. All right. All right, uh, I saw a message here from Eddie Sudan says, birthday greetings to my niece Khadija Temple. Her birthday was yesterday and tomorrow is sister Tracy Urbane. All right, and he shouts out you ladies. Of course, sister Carol, sister Carol Vose, your friend, um, Rosalie George, Rosalie Sinclair George, she says, greetings and happy birthday to you. All right, good, let's do this. Thank you all. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, hope all your dreams come true. Happy birthday, a happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, we hope all your dreams come true. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right. And for some announcements, of course, we have our Friday evening worship at 6 30. So we extend to all our family members here to come worship with us. As a family, this evening we have a, uh, a dynamic presenter, uh, the Brian Jones will be with us this evening. So come on in and tune in and worship together with us, one big family. Tomorrow, the Southwest Zone, we head to Faith Center in San Fernando. It's going to be a powerful, powerful packed day. It's The theme is No One Left Behind families in mission and our uh, the, our presenter for the morning would be our very own pastor walcott niger walcott so come on down it's going to be a, a, a prayerful um, experience it's also going to be spirit filled spirit led and it's an opportunity you don't want to miss fellowshipping with other members of the zone so we head head down to or head up to san fernando Faith Center, Prince of Wales Street, and come and experience a blessing together there. No one left behind, families in mission. Those of you from Point Fortin uh, regard, uh, needing transport, please reach out to us so that we can have you accommodated. Even if you were not thinking of going, you don't know how you're going, we have some spaces available. So please yeah. reach out to us. Yes, Brother Hewitt, you could come on down. All right. Come on down tomorrow morning. We begin at 9.30 a.m. Right? You get a break for lunch between 1 and 3, and then the evening program runs from 3 to 5. Let's have a prayer, everyone. Lord, we give you praise and thanks for the opportunity to call upon your matchless name. Lord, we glorify your name. We honor you. Take charge of our day and the weekend ahead. I pray that love would come through our lips, love would come through our actions, and that we would be selfless, looking out for one another, caring for each other, just as Christ did. Have no hang-ups about it, but let our expressions be based with love. Bless us, Lord, and thank you for leading us. And this is our prayer in our matchless name. Amen. 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 Right. Have a good day, everyone. And we'll Same. see you later today. Thank you, brother. Same. Thank you. God bless you, everybody. All right. Bye-bye.